Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. And today, we're going to take a look at creating a cell shading, kind of cartoon style shader effect in Unity. And we're going to use the new shader graph system that's included in the lightweight render pipeline asset system. And if you haven't played around with that before, we're going to take a quick look at how that whole thing works. So you can see, what, basically what we're going to do here is, on this guy on the left, he has the basic normal kind of Unity shader built in. You can see shadows moving like they normally would as the light rotates around. But you can see on these two characters, these are both using the same shader with different values set up. So we've got more hard shadows, it's, this one has darker shadows, and we've got edge lighting and things like that. And we're going to take a look at how we can do all that very simply and very easily now. So we're starting off with a completely blank project here and we'll go through the process of setting up the lightweight render pipeline or the universal render pipeline as it's going to become known in the next version of Unity. Uh, so it's very simple, very straightforward. All we have to do is go to our window and go to package manager. Once it loads up, you can see it's loading packages here. Give it a few seconds and once that's done we can select lightweight RP and we'll install that and obviously it'll take a minute or two so let's just skip past that okay so that's all loaded in now so I'm going to close out of this then we're going to need uh, something to create our shader effect on something visual so I'm going to use the robot Kyle asset made by unity so if you go to the asset store and if you just type in Kyle in there you'll get the space robot Kyle little guy it's pretty simple it's a free asset, easy to use, so nice and simple for us to use here. So back in our scene view, I can then, with that installed, I've already downloaded it, I can go to the model folder, select Robot Kyle, click and drag him into our scene, and there we go, we now have our little Robot Kyle here. You can see he's got the normal default shader on. Now we've added the lightweight render pipeline package, but we haven't actually configured it yet. So at the moment, we're not actually doing anything with it, which so, you might notice, hey, our guy is perfectly normal. And normally if you import other objects that are made in older versions of Unity into your project, they won't always render completely correct. They'll turn all pink. And we'll see why that happens in a second. So let's now go to our asset folder and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create rendering, lightweight render pipeline and pipeline asset. So we'll create that here. We'll just leave it as the default name. And this creates the asset that will control how our rendering system takes place. So now I can go to Edit, Project Settings, and we just go to Graphics. And here we have a slot for scriptable, scriptable Render Pipeline Settings. And we just, if we hit that little circle, we can select the pipeline asset we just created. So I'm going to select that. And now if we switch back to our scene view, now our little guy has gone all pink, which obviously we don't want. But what's happening is the old material that was on him was just the normal standard default Unity material, but now we're in a different rendering pipeline, so we need a specific material for this, and it's very easy to do that. All we have to do is, let's get the existing robot material, and I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it. Oh, I can't duplicate it. I can hit Control and D to duplicate it, and I'm gonna drag that into a new folder that we'll call materials if I could spell materials correctly, and we'll now drag that into the materials folder. And on this, I'm gonna change the shader from legacy shaders to lightweight render pipeline and lit. So then we'll obviously need to also make sure that this has an image in here, but before we do that, let's just set this onto our little guy. So let's click and drag the material on top of him and boom, he gets the material applied, but he has no texture. So I'm going to hit the circle grab the texture that was included with the download, and now we have the robot color on place, but it's a little bit dark because by default it gives us this gray color. So let's make it white, and there we go. We now have our normal little robot Kyle. So with our robot Kyle in place, and now rendering prop properly in our pipeline, the next thing we need to do is actually start creating our shader. So I'm gonna duplicate this guy. So I'm gonna hit Control and D, and move one over to the side here, so, so we can see him and we'll use this as a reference to, hey, this is what it looks like normally, and this is going to be what our shader graph version looks like, or our new shader version. Uh, I'm also going to move the camera in the game view down here so that we can get a good view of what's going on. So let's grab this camera. We'll also grab our light, 
and I'm going to spin this around so that it's more obviously shining on the front of our little guys. Okay, so now we've got our two Kyles all set up. So let's go ahead and start creating a shader. So creating the shaders is really easy in Shader Graph. That's one of the really fun things about it. Uh, so let's start off with some of the basics. So we're going to go into assets here. I'm going to create a new folder, which we'll call shaders, very simply. And I'm going to right click, go to create shader, and we're going to create a unlit graph. And we'll call this, let's call this tune cell shader. And then we go up to the top up here and open shader editor. And that'll pop up a new window. And we've got a little object here that says unlit master. And this is basically the endpoints for what we want to have going out. So you have position, color, alpha, and alpha clip threshold. Basically, these are the values that are sent out to the renderer to use. Now, we're going to wor not worry too much about most of these. The only one we're going to worry about is color for now, because that's what shows the texture that we have on our character. So before we do anything else, now that we have this set up, I'm going to just drag this over to the side for one second. And I'm going to go back to my first robot, Kyle. And I'm going to create a new material that we'll call, uh, where's create material that we'll call robot underscore tune. I'm going to make sure that that has the shader we just created. So we'll go to shader graphs and then tune cell shader. And then I'm going to click and drag this onto our little robot. Now, obviously at the moment, it just comes out gray because we haven't done anything else just yet, but we're going to start adding some things to make this look a bit better. Okay. Now that we have that material applied, uh, ooh, I'm doing the wrong thing here. I'm trying to just get this into position. I want to position this on my screen so that I can see what this guy looks like over here. And also we have a view of them in the game view as well. So we can have a bit of a better idea of what's going on as we make changes. So Shader Graph is a really powerful tool and there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. And honestly, you can spend a lot of time playing around with different settings. Uh, I know I have spent a whole bunch of time playing around with this stuff, but getting some of the basics in place are obviously really important. So first thing we're going to do is make sure that we can put a texture onto our little guy to give him the kind of same look as what he has over here where, you know, he has all these lines and different colors and different parts. So for that, we're going to need a texture. So we're going to need a texture that we can input to our material when we create it. So in the top corner here, we have what's called the blackboard. So I can turn this on and off up here and the blackboard allows us to add inputs. So I'm going to add a new one here called texture 2D. And we're just going to call this the texture like so. And then if I click and drag on this little circle, or sorry, this little kind of rounded rectangle here, you can drag this into the view and it creates a new input object. Then we need to convert this into something that can be read out by the color here. So I'm going to right click, create a node. And what I'm going to do is go, sorry, not an artistic. I'm just going to start typing in a texture because we know it's a texture that we're creating. And what we want is sample texture 2D. So this will take in the texture 2D asset that we created here and it'll convert it into a different red, green and blue and alpha values over here. So what we all we have to do is click on our little point here and just drag it over to the input of our sample texture. And now we can take these colors, the RGBA and pass this out into color over here. So that'll just convert the texture that we have into whatever texture we want over here. And if I now save this, you can see instantly, oh, it's become a slightly whiter color. That's because we don't have any texture applied. But now if I go over here to, if we make sure we select the robot tune material down here. Now, if I go to texture, I can select the robot color texture and boom, we've applied all our textures to this little guy. So perfect. We're already making some progress. Now at the moment, this guy has no lighting on him at all. So if I was to rotate the light around, let me just grab the light. He's a little bit high up here. You can see as I rotate, you can see the shadows changing on the other guy, but this guy has no light on him at all. So we're going to set up how our lighting system is going to work. And it's going to be a little bit different because it's not going to rely on the normal unity lighting system. Well, it is in a way, but it's not, we're going to have to do something a little bit special. Now, this is the one thing that we're going to have to do in this process that 
is going to require a tiny bit of code. I'm not going to require you to write this code because shader code is mi magical and mystical. Uh, we're going to keep it nice and simple. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go, I'm just going to click and drag this over to the right here and then I'm going to go over to this side. And I'm going to right click, I'm going to hit create, I'm going to type custom and we're going to add a custom function. Now custom functions are basically ways of doing extra special things that shader graph doesn't know how to handle within Unity. And the reason we need to do this is because we need to get the direction that the light in our scene is coming from. And there's no specific shader way to do this or shader, shader graph way to do it. It's a, it's a very simple bit of code, uh, which I'm going to show you in a second. But to do it, all we have to do is select custom function here and hit the little gear icon to the side. And there's two ways we can do this. We can get a a file that we can use to run the code, or we can enter a string and just type in the function down here. So what are we going to do? Well, in the link in the description down below, there will be a link to this paste bin file, which is basically a bunch of code here, which if I just quickly tell you what it does, it is, as you can see, it's getting lighting information and it just says here if we're in the shader graph preview which is this little window here it basically just creates an imaginary light for us to use but otherwise if we're in the normal unity it finds the main light and gets the direction of the light and things like this and the color and attenuation which are things that we can use in our shader so with that done what we can then do is copy this or sorry with this with this available to us, we can copy this bit of text. There's two ways we can do it. We can copy this bit of text and paste it in here, like so. And we can call this get lighting information, like so. Now, sometimes you'll see it happens like this. The code won't necessarily compile. This one seems to be looking for another. It doesn't understand the uh, open close bracket. So what I usually do is actually get the file version of it. So I've already got this downloaded. So it's downloaded as a mainlight.hlsl, which is a shader language file. So I'm going to click and drag this into our, let's see, let's go to our shaders folder. I'll put it in there. So we'll click and drag that in there. We've got mainlight. Then all I have to do here is go to our file, find that file here. So you can see we have the mainlight. And we get a little bit of an error because it's trying to send out some information. So if you look back at the file again here, you can see it's trying to send out a direction, a, a color, and attenuation. So we need to set it up to get those objects out. So I can go here and where we have our outputs, we can just add a new vector tree that we'll call direction. Another vector tree that we'll call color. And finally, a vector one that we'll call attenuation. So now we're sending out these three, uh, just let me click this again. So now we've got these three different variables that we can use. Now we can start doing some code that will allow us to move this around. And as we go, we're gonna connect this stuff up to the ends of our system so that we can see how all this stuff is, is working in our game or sorry, in our shader. So I'm just gonna drag this over so we can see our little dude here again. So first thing we're gonna do is do this lighting system. And this is gonna be the most kind of complicated maths bit, but not too complicated. One thing about shader is there is a lot of, well, to a certain extent, there's a bit of complicated maths, but we can keep things nice and simple. So what we need to do is we're gonna to get to the direction of the light and then we're going to depending on how that direction it relates to the world around us, we're gonna add different shadows to our character. So we're here we're getting the direction of the light. Uh, I'm not gonna create a node just yet. And we're gonna right click here actually and create another node. And this isn't gonna be connected to this one, but this is going to give us a normal vector. So a normal vector is just going to be a normal vector tree direction. So we can choose what direction it's based on. So we could use the view, for example, the object itself that this material is applied to, but we're gonna use the world space. So we just know, hey, based on a normal kind of facing forward direction, we're gonna combine this with our direction from the light that we're getting. And we're gonna combine that by using a dot product. So I'm gonna create a node. We're gonna say dot product. And dot product basically gives us uh, 
a value between uh, minus one and one of whether uh, an object is to the left or the right of a certain angle. If you want to understand dot products a bit better, I recommend just quickly looking up online. It, you're going to find a better explanation than I can give in a few seconds. All we need to know is that this will give us a nice uh, hard edge to our light, or it'll give us a nice way of calculating the way our light is shining on our little guy. So if I send this out here, so we combine both of these into our dot product. Let's see how this looks on our final guy by... I'm going to stop showing the texture for the moment, but we're going to click and drag this over here to output to our color. So it might be a bit hard to see, but you can see I've grabbed the out here and I've put it onto the color over here. And now if I save the asset, you can see we're starting to get some shadows being applied to our little guy. So if I go ahead and just rotate the light around now, now we've got some nice shadows applying. You can see they're roughly appearing the same as they do over here, but we don't want that. We want them to be a nice sharp, um, hard edge to our little lights here. So with that in mind, I'm going to go back to just after I do this dot project and I'm going to select another node. So I'm going to create a node called Smooth Step. And smooth Step basically allows us to cut off light at a certain point. So if I grab this out value here and pass it into there, and we're going to take the out from this now to the edge of a master. I'm going to move our little master down here. We'll put our texture back in at a certain point, but for now we're just going to leave it uh, doing this one thing. So if I just save this right now, it's not going to make too much difference to our asset because if I go ahead and rotate our little camera around, you can see, hey, we're still getting the same thing happening. But you might notice that we're kind of getting a lot harder shadows. We're getting a lot deeper, darker colors on this guy. But to be able to control our smooth step, we're going to want to control that with some values in our material. So we're going to create two new values up here. So I'm going to add a vector one that we'll call shadow size. And I'm going to add another vector one that we'll call shadow blend. And I'm going to set these up with some default values. Now you can play around with these and see what works nicely for you. This is what I found works well for this system. So where we have mode here, I'm going to change it to slider. And we're going to set a minimum of minus one and a maximum of one for the shadow size. And then for shadow blend, we're going to say the we're going to set the mode to slider as well and set the minimum as zero and the maximum as one. And they, they both work perfectly for our purposes here. Now I'll just collapse these down. So we have those two values. I'm going to drop these into our shader graph, like so. And we're going to have shadow size be the first value on our smooth step. And then for shadow blend, let, let's put it in here for now, but we're going to do something slightly different with this. Now you might have noticed, look straight away, we've got a nice hard edge over here. So let's see how this looks on our little guy over here. When I save that, well, boom, instantly, we're starting to see something a little bit different. Uh, let's just drag this out of the way for the moment. I'll just drag this over here. If we go back to our materials and select our robot tune, we now have a few different variables we can play around with. And if we go over here and look at this guy, we've got nice hard shadows on him. So if I increase the shadow size like this, you can see, oh, we're getting a lot of weird things happening here. And if we start playing with a shadow blend, you can see we're getting harder and softer shadows. But the reason we're getting this weird kind of, we're getting hard, but then we're going soft, soft, soft like this. The reason that's happening is because we've got these two values here, but they're not interacting with each other. Basically, shadow blend is becoming a threshold point uh, related to shadow size. But basically what we want to do is we're going to add shadow blend here onto shadow size so that we have a first low value on our smooth step and then a slightly higher value which will allow us to have a, a huge shadow area and a tiny little gradual area where it switches between black and white. So let's just see that in action. The best way to do it is to see it. So I'm going to create a new node called add. We're going to pop this. I'm going to collapse this one down because it doesn't need to be so big. And I'm going to take from the output here. So you'll notice here that we have two outputs going away and that's okay. You're allowed to have multiple outputs, but you can only ever have one thing going into an input. 
but outputs can go to as many different put areas as you want. And then I'm going to unhook this one from here and pop it into the add. Then I'm going to get the add and pop it in here like this. And now if I save that, you can see, oh, those hard edges are all gone off this guy. So if I drag this down, now play around with this stuff. Now we'll see if we put our shadow size down to zero to minus one, all the shadows go away. But if we pull it up, we now have a better control over, over the size of our shadows. And our shadow blend here, if I drag this up, you can see if we go all the way to one, we get nice smooth shadows, much more like a normal kind of uh, shadows that we have over here. But also if we pull it back down, we get nice sharp shadows. So I'm actually gonna pull it up a tiny bit. So we get slightly blurry shadows. If we zoom in on it, you can see they're a little bit smooth and it just makes it feel a little bit nicer. Uh, but all this is all kind of down to how it feels for you as well, obviously. So we've now got our smooth step in place. We're going over to our Unlit Master. Let's see how it looks if we combine both of this and our texture into one. So to do that, I'm going to add a new node here that we'll call Multiply. And I'm going to grab our color out of here and put this in at this point. Then I'm going to grab our texture output, put this in here. Send all of that out to our master, and if we hit save, now we get our our nice uh, texture applied to our object, but you can see we've now got a solid hard shadow. So let's play around with the shadow size again. You can see our shadows are changing and becoming more interesting as we go. Now, obviously at the moment we've got really deep black shadows, so let's change how our shadows color is appearing. So to do that, we have a very 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 simple process what we do is take from our smooth step here we're going to pull out a new node so i'm going to just click and drag this and this will allow us to create a new node and here i'm going to create a one minus node and this is basically going to say one minus whatever value is coming out of here and this is how we can get the uh, shadowy values out of here so i'm going to take that I'm going to add a new variable at the top, a new color variable that we'll call shadow color. I'm going to drop this down here. Oh, it's just kind of frozen up for a second. I'm just going to save this, close it and reopen. Sometimes you, you'll have this happen with your shaders. They might kind of freeze up a little bit and you just have to close and reopen, especially when you create variables. I, I notice this happening sometimes, but it's not, a, it's not a huge headache. So I can grab this shadow color, drop it in here. Then we're going to combine these together. So I'm going to create a multiply to multiply them both together, like so. And then to add it back into our system, I'm going to create an add node because we took away the shadow values here. So we want to add them back in. So we're going to put this as the output. I'm going to grab this from here. And we're going to put this one back up here. So now we're adding back into our smooth step, which obviously this value still stores that, but we're basically adding the shadow value on top of the existing values here. We're going to add this back into here. So we're adding color into our little object. And now if I save this, we should see when we go back in here. Now at the moment, it looks no different because a color when it's first added by default will be set up as black. So, but if I go up here and change this to complete white, that means there's no visible shadow. So what we're gonna do instead is pick a color. We're gonna go for a kind of bluish. So we're gonna go for a nice dark blue. Now we could go any color. We could go a nice bright blue or green or red. Now we have a bit more control over how this is gonna work. So let's go for a nice kind of dark blue. Maybe even almost purpley. Pull it down here. So now we've got a little bit of shadow action going on. We're able to control how our shadow color looks as well. So we can go for a more stylized effect if we want to. But speaking of color, what happens if we change the color of our light in our scene, for example? So at the moment, if I change this to any other color, you can see that's affecting the other default shader, but it's not affecting us because we're not actually using the color just yet. So let's add that in. Let's add in a very simple way to control the color. Now we know we have the color over here. So this is what color is being detected from the light. So we can just simply multiply that back in to our output. So output over here, we know this little branch here 
is controlling the shadows, so we're not going to worry about that. But along this line is where we're interacting with the light. So let's multiply the color that we're getting from the uh, light in our scene with the output that we have over here. So I'm going to right click, create a multiply node. And we're going to, oops, did the wrong thing there. I'm going to grab this. There we go. Pop that in there like that. And I will grab the color from over here. And we're going to put that into the slot there. And now we're going to send this out back into the main line of things. And now if we save, you should see immediately. Look, our little guy has got the color from the light now. So now we can get some cool interactions going on. We can have really interesting light patterns and we'll have a different shadow over here on the left uh, to make our little guy feel a bit more interesting. But the one final thing that really makes this feel more like a, a cartoony object is to add light around the edges of our little guy. And this is, adds as a little highlight, but also allows us to do a cool little uh, extra interesting effect. So first thing I'm going to do is change this light back to a kind of default state. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to add something to our little graph here. So I'm going to go up the top up here in this area and I'm going to right click and create a node called Fre Fre Fresnel or Fresnel. I don't actually know which way most people pronounce it, but it's a Fre Fresnel effect. I think maybe it's Fresnel. I'm not sure. It's spelled Fresnel anyway. Uh, but this is an effect that will add, add basically an outline onto our little guy. So let's just see how this would look by default. I'm just going to create an add node. So I'm going to add this to our character. So I'm going to add it after we add in color. We're going to add this back in too. So let's see how this would look. So we'll pop this in here. Grab the output of this. Add it on here. Add it out here. So if I save this now, you'll see in our scene view, we now have a bit of a glow around our character. Let's just turn it off for a second and save. It gets rid of it and we'll put it back on and save. You can see we get this kind of outer edge glow, which is fine, but we don't want to have just a smooth edge like that. We want it to be stepped nicely like we have done before. So let's set that up first of all. So we use two values for our shadows. Let's also use two values for our uh, rim light, which is what we're going to call this kind of edge light. So we're going to add a new vector one that we'll call rim light size. And another one. Oh, well, it's not letting me do that. We're going to have to do this one at a time, uh, unfortunately. Again, just one of those weird little quirks as the shader editor kind of gets improved upon in future versions of Unity. I was testing out the beta version of this for the next version of Unity, and I think it kind of corrects most of these issues that we're having here. But we'll have a rim light blend, which will be our other value. So I'll save this as well. So you can save, close, open it back up again. Okay, so with that done, let's drag these into our scene. And much like we did for our smooth step when we were getting the main kind of system of our character. We're going to do this for our Fresnel effect as well. So I'm going to get our rim light size. We'll put this up here and our rim light blend like so. I'm actually, while I'm here, I'm going to change both of these to a slider as well, but we're going to leave them as zero and one by default, just to make it easier to edit the material in the system. So with that done, what we're then going to do is much like we did for our smooth step, we're gonna add our shadow size and our shadow blend together to get the uh, kind of smooth amount between them. So we're gonna create an add node and we'll collapse this down nice and small and we'll put both of these in place here. Then we're gonna create a smooth step. So we're gonna create smooth step, which obviously is gonna take in uh, our Fresnel effect like there and then to determine the edge is going to be the two of them combined and also just the size up here and we're going to send this out to the add that we had down here so out down here like so then we can save this you can see on our asset now it's got 
way way brighter because we haven't set up the values that we're going to use so let's now go look at the material for our little robot guy and now we can control the rim light size now you'll notice as we increase this value the rim light is actually shrinking down which is a little bit counterintuitive that doesn't make a lot of sense and still if we increase the, the blend we're still getting the the size change so we don't want really to it to work this way that at zero the rim is really big light and at one is really small so to simply reverse that all we have to do is back over here before we send the size out we're going to create a one minus node and just uh, get send this out to here and then both of these objects that are coming to these other areas we're going to send that through to one minus so it'll basically just reverse the number that we're using here so i can save this now and again if we go back and look at this now you can see as we increase it we get this nice little edge light appearing on our character but we want to make this look a bit more interesting at the moment it's just white which does work nicely and we get this cool effect especially from the back it works nicely because it creates this light at the edge that we can see to make our character stand out a bit nicer but what actually will work really nicely and especially when we want to work with different kind of lighting in different environments and do cool things with our character is to add a color to our outline here so for that i'm going to add one more variable this is going to be our final variable which is going to be our rim color and again that's probably going to freeze up the shader graph so i'll just close out that reopen it again and i'm just going to make sure i have that material open in the background so with that we can then grab our rim color and just add that in after our smooth step so we're going to sorry not add it in but multiply it by our smooth step so we'll multiply it in here like so uh, oops i'm gonna grab this add out of here drag that in here like this and now if i save the asset we can close that for the moment and now on our rim light at the moment well we have no rim light appearing because our color is just black so i'm going to make this a nice kind of bluey color and you can see straight away it makes it pop out of the environment a little bit nicer so we got let's increase our size give it a slight smoothing to the blend and now we've got a pretty interesting little uh shader effect going on so now basically what's left to do from here is to just play around with it you can get really interesting values by playing around with the object uh, especially controlling things like the size of the materials and obviously depending on what kind of 3d models you're using things will look a little bit different uh, but it's really powerful and really simple you can see in just a short amount of time we created a very simple shader but which gives a really cool effect and versus the normal kind of unity shader it, it really kind of stands out and really makes your game feel a bit different and making your game look and play and feel different is a huge component of making games in unity now one final thing we can do to this to make it stand out a bit better would be to add an outline to our character now that's not really something that you would do with the shader graph system it's more of a kind of post-processing effect it's done it, it works really nicely as a post-processing effect so what we can do for that for example uh, there is there is ways to do it as a effect as well but it's a bit, bit more costly on your system uh, so what i'm going to do is very simply uh, we've got i've got a link that will also be in the description to this github project by um uh, roystan.net which is an outline shader for unity very simple and very easy to use and you can clone you can download this into your project so i have it downloaded already so i've got the master file here I'm going to go into assets and I'm going to I'm going to right click over here and create a folder that I'll call outline this is very quick and very simple to do uh, oh no I don't want that I want the assets folder so I'm just going to select all of these assets and drag them into our file and our project and then all I'm going to do is go to my main camera once that all just compiles into place and we're going to add uh, post processing so if you haven't played around with post-processing, that's a whole different topic altogether. But to very quickly set up a post-process, all we have to do is add a post-process layer, like so. 
then add a post process volume, create a new post process profile over here. We're going to make sure that this is on, we'll just put it on the default layer. Unity gives you a warning because it doesn't like you doing that, but for our purposes and a very simple project, it doesn't matter. Then we're going to make the post process volume global, and then we can add a whole bunch of built in Unity effects, but most importantly, we want to go to Roystan post process outline. You can see this creates a nice white outline, so we're going to change that by dropping it down, turning on color, and we're going to change it to black. And boom, we have a fully cool looking tune shader effect in your game. So this can, with just that short amount of time that this video is taken, you can completely change the look of your game uh, by doing this. You can obviously add this to a whole different bunch of things. So I could, if I just, for example, create a 3D cube, we'll add it into our scene here. Now, obviously this has the default Unity lighting on it. Uh, add another 3D sphere, put this over here. You can see even just by adding an outline, it, it creates a good effect. But let's give a quick material to this guy. So I'm going to duplicate our robot tune, and I'm just going to delete the texture from it. And I'm going to then, oh, no, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so let's click and dra drag this on here. And you can see we now have this kind of very simple looking ball, but it has a tune effect on it. So I could change the color of the rim light if we wanted to. Go with a different kind of color. Go with some interesting shadow colors. We can play around and do a whole bunch of cool things. We can play with the shadow size, obviously. Create a nice little tiny shadow at the top. We could make it super hard. We can do a whole bunch of cool effects with this very simple system. So there you go. I 100% recommend that you play around with your shader graph, see what kind of cool things you can create along the way. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. And at most importantly, have some fun making your game look a bit different. Thanks for watching. I will be back soon with more tutorials and more videos and fun next week.